Hey, hello. Am I live? Am I live? I'm testing. just checking the lights. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. Another drink of coffee. Oh, let me make sure we're public. Are we live? 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 <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Is it 2 o'clock on Tuesday already? Everybody got a snack? Are you... Got some coffee if you're a grown up. <laughs> you know, it could be tea time somewhere. So, a good cup of tea, hot chocolate. What else would be fun to drink? Good glass of water if it's warm where you are. It's Stuart and Zoe so far. Yay! Hi, hi, Zoe and Stuart. What's going on in England? Oh my gosh. I love it when you guys log in. I wish we were closer. I'm going to rearrange a little uh -oh. here. Camera moving. <laughs> Everyone can now see how Dave and I set up. Usually we do this beforehand, but we just got done with a work meeting and had to run downstairs and uh, kind of switch gears into poem reading. I like that. Work to poetry. Poetry to work. Um, let me know, Zoe and Stuart, if you guys have any um, requests. Because I know you have the book. Because last week you sent me a great picture of your cat. I think it was Molly uh, reading the book. I love it. Oh, all right. How are we doing? Are we ready? Should I go? Should I get started? Is it? Three, two. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Here we are. Tuesday at two. And if you find yourself with nothing to do, let's read a poem and try something new. A virtual fun and a giggle or two. It is such a treat to see your names and comments pop up. And I cannot believe that this is the fourth installment of uh, reading reading on Facebook Live. I, I Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. And last week, so yeah, here's our stats from last week. We had England. Woo-woo! And I think England is back. Woo-woo! Four people. Um, oh, four people already. Hi, guys. Um, and we had 16 different states represented. That is awesome. How, how cool is that that we're all checking in, making sure everybody's good. Are you all doing good, safe at home? Have you cleaned everything? Have you remodeled? What, what are you guys doing while you're at home? Uh, Dave and I are working, so we, we are doing a little bit of cleaning and sorting, but it's mostly working. So hooray for the internet keeping us busy. And thank you, clients, for keeping us busy. I know a couple of you tuned in. Um, here is a virtual hug from me to you guys. So hang in there. Uh, stay home. Stay safe. Be well. But let's do fun stuff right now. So I'm going to keep reading because we haven't read them all, I know, uh, <laughs> from where the sidewalk ends. And Dave is here, as you heard. He's given me a hand. He yells out uh, when he sees you, your comments pop up. So send your requests so he can read them. Um, and my first poem today was requested last week by a friend that I've had since kindergarten. Now, that was a long time ago. So shout out to my friend Elise. Hi, Elise. Um, great to see you online. And the poem you requested is on page 36. Da -da -da. And it's called Us. Me and him, him and me, we're always together as you can see. I wish he'd leave so I could be free. I'm getting a little bit tired of he, and he might be a bit bored with me. On movies and ladies, we cannot agree. I like to dance, he loves to ski. He likes the mountains, I love the sea. I like hot chocolate, but he wants his tea. I want to sleep, but he has to pee. He's meaner and duller and fatter than me. But I guess there's worse things we could be. Instead of two, we could be three. Me and him, him and me. <laughs> so thank you for that request. Here's the picture. Him and me. <laughs> Alrighty. Any comments? Any requests? I'm going to do a shout out. Hi, Susan, Steve, Stephanie, Brett, Gregory, Carolyn, Grant, 
Aunt Donna, Jen and her family. This is the shout outs to our Texas friends and family. And if I miss someone, let me know. But I think that was everyone um, that I've seen that was uh, located in Texas. And a little known fact, I was born in Texas. And I think Dave was born in Texas. But here we are in Illinois. All right, next poem, page 28, Jimmy Jet and his TV set. There we go. And I'll show you the picture at the end. <laughs> um, and I must have liked this poem because it's got a really old paper clip and it's such an old paper clip that it rusted onto the other page. <laughs> and again, I told you this is a well-worn book. All right, Jimmy Jet and his TV set. I'll tell you the story of Jimmy Jet, and you know what I tell you is true. He loved to watch his TV set almost as much as you. He watched all day, he watched all night, till he grew pale and lean from the early show to the late, late show and all the shows between. He watched till his eyes were frozen wide and his bottom grew into his chair. His chin turned into a turning dial and an antenna grew out of his hair. And his brains turned into TV tubes and his face into a TV screen with two knobs saying vert and horrors where his ears had been. And he grew a plug that looked like a tail. So we plugged in little Jim. And now instead of him watching TV, we all sit around and watch him. <laughs> so don't watch too much TV, you'll turn into a TV. That's the lesson <laughs> there. I don't want to have two knobs for your ears. Uh, what is your favorite show? Uh, speaking of watching too much TV, we are doing a little bit of that. I really like to watch a good British cozy mystery. My favorite is Agatha Christie's Poirot because he's Belgian. Yay, Belgium. <laughs> what do you guys like to watch? Let me know. Maybe there's something new I should be watching. And if it's a cozy mystery, even better. All right, let's go over to page 43. And I will tell you a true story. This morning I jumped on my horse and I went out for a ride and some wild outlaws chased me and they shot me in the side. So I crawled into a wildcat's cave to find a place to hide. But some pirates found me sleeping there and soon they had me tied to a pole and built a fire under me. I almost cried till a mermaid came and cut me loose and begged to be my bride. So I said I'd come back Wednesday, but I must admit I lied. Then I ran into a jungle swamp, but I forgot my guide. And I stepped into some quicksand, and no matter how I tried, I couldn't get out until I met a water snake named Clyde, who pulled me to some cannibals who planned to have me fried. But an eagle came and swooped me up, and through the air we fly, and he dropped me into a boiling lake a thousand miles wide. And you'll never guess what I did next. I died. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one because there's a snake named Clyde and uh, that that's uh, that's my dad's name he's not a snake though are you dad are you a snake <laughs> <laughs> all right over to page 109 and I'll show you the picture uh, at the end so you can see what is the yippee yuck in the swamp lands long ago, where the weeds and the mud glumps grow, a yippee yuck bit me on my toe. Exactly why, I don't know. I kicked, I cried, and hollered, ow! The yippee yuck would not let go. I, I whispered to him, soft and low. The yippee yuck would not let go. I shouted, stop, desist, whoa! The yippee yuck would not let go. Yes, that was 16 years ago, and the yippee yuck still won't let go. The snow may fall, the winds may blow, the yippee yuck will not let go. The snow may melt, the grass may grow, the yippee yuck will not let go. I drag him round each place I go, this yippee yuck that won't let go. And now my child, 
At last you know exactly why I walk so slow. And here is this poor man with this tiny little persistent yippee yuck eating his toe. <laughs> I like that one because he just won't let go. Ah, oh. did you write any poems this week? Have you read them to your friends and family? Have you sent them to me? I didn't get any poems this week. Come on, you guys, write some poems. You can just do a haiku. All right, let's go over to the one that when I was practicing, yes, I practiced, uh, earlier today made Dave giggle. So, page 160. Dun, 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 dun. Hungry Mungry. Are you ready? This one might make you hungry by the end of it. Okay. Hungry Mungry. Hungry Mungry sat at supper, took his knife and spoon and fork, and a bowl, ate a bowl of mushroom soup, ate a slice of roasted pork, ate a dozen stewed tomatoes, 27 deviled eggs, 15 shrimps, 9 baked potatoes, 32 fried chicken legs, a shank of lamb, a boiled ham, 2 bowls of grits, some black eyed peas, 4 chocolate shakes, 8 angel cakes, 9 custard pies with Munster cheese, 10 pots of tea, and after he had eaten all that he was able, he poured some broth on the tablecloth and ate the kitchen table. <laughs> His parents said, hungry, mungry, stop these silly jokes. Mungry opened up his mouth and gulp, he ate his folks. And then he went and ate his house, all the bricks and wood, and he ate up all the people in the neighborhood. Up came 20 angry policemen shouting, stop and cease. Mungry opened up his mouth and gulp, he ate the police. Soldiers came with tanks and guns said Mungry, they can't harm me. He just smiled and hmm, licked his lips and ate the U.S. Army. The president sent all his bombers. Mungry still was calm. Put his head back, gulped the planes, and gobbled up the bomb. He ate his town and ate the city, ate and ate and ate. And then he said, I think I'll eat the whole United States. So he ate Chicago first and munched the water tower, and then he chewed on Pittsburgh, but found that it was rather sour. He ate New York and Tennessee and all of Boston town, then drank the Mississippi River just to wash it down. And when he'd eaten every state, each puppy, boy and girl, he wiped his mouth upon his sleeve and went to eat the world. He ate the Egypt pyramids and every church in Rome, and all the grass in Africa, and all the ice in Nome. He ate each hill in green Brazil, and then to make things worse, he decided for dessert he'd eat the universe. He started with the moon and stars, and soon as he was done, he gulped the clouds and sipped the wind and gobbled up the sun. Then sitting there in the cold, dark air, he started to nibble his feet, then his legs, then his hips, then his neck, then his lips, till he sat there just gnashing his teeth. Cause nothing was nothing, was nothing, was nothing, was nothing was left to eat. <laughs> hungry mungry. So don't be that hungry. Don't don't eat a tablecloth or the universe or Chicago. Don't eat Chicago. We live here. Uh, all right, to counter the hungry mungry, let's head over to page 142 to Skinny. Skinny McGuinn was so terribly thin that while taking his bath Saturday, Sunday night, out popped the plug and swoosh, swoosh, and glug, glug, it washed Skinny right down the drain out of sight. And where is our dear Skinny bathing tonight? In some underground pool down below? or up so high in that tub in the sky where all the clean people go. <laughs> Look at this picture. I love this bathtub. Good old clawfoot, good and deep. You can have lots of bubbles. Okay, over to page 40. Bum, bum, bum. Hey, any requests, Dave? Well, I'm trying to get to page 40. 
I have bookmarks. I don't know why. I just... Let us know what you want to see, everyone. Yes, or any special listen requests? to. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> dance, dance, it. if you ask, though. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> okay, over to page 40. And this one is called Rain. I'm going to have a little sip of coffee. I need some more. We have nine people. Hello, nine people. Hi, nine people. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, page 40. And this one is called Rain. I opened my eyes and looked up to the rain, and it dripped in my head and flowed in my brain. And all that I hear as I lie in my bed is the slishy slosh of the rain in my head. I step very softly. I walk very slow. I can't do a handstand because I might overflow. So pardon the wild, crazy thing I just said. I'm not the same since there's rain in my head. <laughs> is that my excuse? <laughs> a little bit of rain in my head. <laughs> All right, over to the next page, page 41. And here's the picture of two boxes. Aren't they cute? So the story is two boxes. Two boxes met upon the road, said one until the other. If you're a box and I'm a box, then you must be my brother. Our sides are thin. We're caving in and we must get no thinner. And so two boxes, hand in hand, went home to have their dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was cute. Uh, alrighty, another one. So I had to make a list so I don't do too many repeats. Uh, page 64. Dun, dun, dun. Where are you? 64. And this one is the poem that the book is called, Where the Sidewalk Ends. There is a place where the sidewalk ends and before the street begins. And there the grass grows soft and white. And there the sun burns crimson bright. And there the moon bird rests from his flight to cool in the peppermint wind. Let us leave this place where the smoke blows black and the dark street winds and bends. Past the pits where the asphalt flowers grow, we shall walk with a walk that is measured and slow and watch where the chalk white arrows go to the place where the sidewalk ends. Yes, we'll walk with a walk that is measured and slow and we'll go where the chalk white arrows go. For the children, they mark, and the children, they know the place where the sidewalk ends. Are you guys drawing things on your sidewalks? We've seen all sorts of great photos of sidewalk art right now. We haven't seen any. Maybe Dave, you and I should go outside and draw on our sidewalk. Surprise everybody with some messages. I saw a sidewalk art with uh, uh, with the child, the Mandalorian <gasps> oh, child, the baby, the baby Yoda, and it said, be, be like the Mandalorian and always wear your mask in public. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I'm going to be a Mando. Wear my mask. Always wear your no, mask I'll in public. Be ourselves. like the Mandalorian. This, this is, is the way. Mandalorian masks. This I is the way. It. This is the way. This is the way. Always I wear your mask spoken. in public. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Is everybody else Mandalorian fans? That is such a great show. <laughs> Thank you, Disney and Star Wars. All right, I, I got through the list that I wanted to do today. Any special requests? Should I do one more? What's what's the consensus? Are you guys tired of this book? Should I get the next one? Uh, a Light in the Attic? I think that's what it's called, right? I think, yeah, The Light in the Attic. I could look that one up. Let me see if I can find one I haven't read. Oops, I read those last week. Oops, I read those. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, oh, anyone, anyone, anyone? Any suggestions, everyone? Any, as I'm sitting here. <laughs> All right, if you're not going to suggest one, I'm going to do one. Page 25, it's called The Loser. Mama said I'd lose my head if it wasn't fastened on. Today, I guess it wasn't, because while playing with my cousin, it fell off and rolled away, and now it's gone. And I, I can't look for it, because my eyes are in it. And I can't call to it, because my mouth is on it. 
couldn't hear me anyway because my ears are on it. Can't even think about it because my brain is in it. So I guess I'll sit down on this rock and rest for a minute and check out what 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 is the rock that, that he's sitting on. It's his head. <laughs> he found it. <laughs> oh, okay, let me think. Another one that we haven't heard. Um, I have another warning poem for you. Are we ready? Captain Hook. We all must learn this lesson from Captain Hook. Captain Hook must remember not to scratch his toes. Captain Hook must watch out and never pick his nose. Captain Hook must be gentle when he shakes your hand. Captain Hook must be careful opening sardine cans and playing tag and pouring tea and turning pages of this book. Lots of folks, I'm glad I ain't, but mostly Captain Hook. <laughs> I used to think that was really, really funny about his nose. That one has lots of bookmarks on it. Let's see. Um, let's go to the back and see what might be there. Ha, ha, ha. Any more suggestions? Are we good? Are we good? Did anyone have any questions? How are you guys doing at home? Is everybody keeping busy? Did you all have a good Easter? Did the Easter bunny come? The Easter Bunny visited our house, which was kind of a surprise because, you know, as grown-ups, he can come later and just have, you know, dinner with us or something. But Dave and I were sitting in the kitchen having uh, breakfast, and we looked out the window, and outside our window, the Easter Bunny was walking his dog. Who knew that the Easter Bunny had a black lab? But it was very awesome. I opened up the window, yelled and waved at him. He waved back, so... Good on you, Easter Bunny. Did everybody else have fun Easters? Easter candy. I had peeps. Peeps are my favorite. Um, all right. I'll do this one last unless anyone sends any suggestions. Uh, page 148. The Silverfish. While fishing in the Blue Lagoon, I caught a lovely silverfish. And he spoke to me, my boy, quoth he, please set me free and I'll grant you a wish, a kingdom of wisdom, a palace of gold, or all of the goodies your fancies can hold. So I said, okay, and I threw him free. And he swam away and he laughed at me, whispering my foolish wish into the sea. Today, I caught that fish again that lovely silver prince of fishes. And once again, he offered me, if I would only set him free, any number of wonderful wishes. He was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I, I seem to have an eating theme today. Maybe I need to go have a snack. Um, what do you think, Dave? How are we doing? Two people just joined, so maybe <gasps> read one more. Aunt Two Janet and Zoe. Oh, hey, Aunt Janet. <laughs> and Zoe from Beloit, Zoe? Oh, uh, yes. Zoe from Beloit, Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have three Zoes in our life. Isn't that awesome? You can never have enough Zoes. <laughs> so, hi. Um, hi, Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I will, I'll continue on the food theme that I seem to have found myself on. Um, on page 122. Me stew. I have nothing to put in my stew, you see, not a bone or a bean or a black-eyed pea, so I'll just climb in the pot to see if I can make a stew out of me. I'll put in some pepper and salt and I'll sit in the bubbling water. I won't scream a bit. I'll sing while I simmer. I'll smile while I'm stewing. I'll taste myself often to see how I'm doing. I'll stir me around with this big wooden spoon and serve myself up at a quarter to noon. So bring out your stew bowls, you gobblers and snackers. Farewell, and I hope you enjoy me with some crackers. <laughs> <laughs> and look at the picture. He's stirring himself in a big pot. <laughs> I think that's funny. <laughs> if this doesn't tell you more about how my brain works, I don't know. 
<laughs> oh, have I read this one on page 103? If I had a brontosaurus, I might have read this one already, but I like it. If I had a brontosaurus, I would name him Horace or Morris. But if suddenly one day he had a lot of little brontosauri, I would have to change his name to Lori. <laughs> it's just silly. Pure silliness. Brontosaurus. Let's see. Is there one more? How are we doing? Who else chimed in? Who else can I say hey to? Michelle Horn. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> we could do, you know, the song I sing while I wash my hands. However, I'm not going to sing it like <laughs> I do when I'm in the bathroom all by myself. I'll read it to you. So this is a great song. If you do it long enough, it is the 20 seconds to wash your hands. Called Boa Constrictor. <laughs> oh... I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor. A boa constrictor, a boa constrictor. I'm being eaten by a boa constrictor and I don't like it one bit. Well, what do you know? It's nibbling my toe. Oh gee, it's up to my knee. Oh my, it's up to my fine. Oh fiddle, it's up to my middle. Oh heck, it's up to my neck. Oh dread <laughs> When I sing it in the bathroom, I, I add more body parts because I can think of the, the rhymes. But now that I'm looking at a camera lens, I can't do that on the call. <laughs> so I'll try writing them down and share them with you later. Um, let me look for one more. And then we should probably go back to work. What do you think, Dave? Ooh. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> no. I, I'm thankful that we have work. Yay. All right. I'm going to do uh, the poem on page 159, Afraid of the Dark. I'm Regional Clark, and I'm afraid of the dark, so I always insist on the light on, and my teddy to hug, and my blanket to rub, and my thummy to suck or to bite on. And three bedtime stories, two trips to the toilet, two prayers, five hugs for my mommy. I'm Regional Clark, and I'm afraid of the dark, so please don't close this book on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that reminds me of the Grover book, The Monster at the End of This Book. Oh, I'm going to have to see if I have that in the house. It might be in storage. If I have it, I'll read that next week. All right, I think that's it. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for playing with me this week and make sure that you stay home, stay well. Oh wait, no, stay home, stay safe and be well. Can you stay well? I guess you could stay well. Stay well at home and be good. That, that could work too. <laughs> this is why I write notes. Thank you guys so much. I will hop online after this and type up some comments and chat with you guys. Um, if you have any requests for next week, put them in the comments. And I think I might bring out the other Shel Silverstein book and see what we can pull out of uh, A Light in the Attic. All right, until next week, see you guys. Love you, bye-bye.